Welcome to this video. In this video, I would like to show and explain to you how you can process the outcome of an activity of an SAP flexible workflow. And to do this, basically, we are using so called callback classes, in this case, the runtime callback class. Here I am in the transaction as WDD underscore scenario. Therefore, you can basically set up a flexible workflow. Here I have already created a flexible workflow consisting of two activities. So the first one is basically to create an HTML for the purchase or the line items. And the second one is a one step approval activity. Once again, um, to having the opportunity to either approve or to reject this one-step approval activity and to end the workflow itself. So I have already created videos about SAP Flexible Workflow, how you can set it up, what are the needed steps and also how you can display HTML for the purchase order line items in the detailed information within the My Inbox SAP Fiori app. So coming back to our um, purpose of this video, basically processing the outcome of an activity. So basically to do this here, you can use uh, the runtime class. So if we, for example, hit the F1 key on our keyboard, uh, there you get some detail information about this one and what is important because if this, these input fields are not editable, then here you have to read the last paragraph. So basically then your scenario, your workflow is already activated and you can't change the callback classes. You can actually change it, but it's um, not editable. So to do this here, you have to see the info button. And basically in my case, that's not the case, but if you can't change those input fields then you have within the flexible block so here just double click on flexible block then go to the process data tab and then here in the top right corner there you have some info button that you can click and that you can confirm making changes even though you have already activated your scenario you maybe you have some runtime data and you really have to to make sure and you, you have to be aware that there could be some inconsistencies so just change it if you're really sure what you're doing and if you are for example developing and that it doesn't make any impact if you're changing the callback classes so once again if we're hitting the of one help then basically you have to make sure to uh, use this interface basically this interface is outdated um, you have to use another one but basically what you can do is i would just copy this class then go into the se24 transaction so within the above class builder and then within here you can basically type in the name of your class and then you can click on create button then once again you have to make sure to choose the option class confirm this and now you can just enter um, one information so for example callback class runtime whatever you like to and in my case i would like to enter the default callback class as the super class to use all the methods um, all the implementations and stuff like that and I would also like to remove the checkbox final to be able at later steps to inherit from this class. It's not needed, but I'm doing this. Then I'm saving and right now here I would like to specify the dollar team P package to basically create this class as a local object. Of course, if you would like to transport your class, you should enter a valid package. So local object, that is fine. Then here if we're going to interface then you can see that not the mentioned interface is being used but um, this one so this is the right interface if you are using the mentioned interface i would like to show you this so going once again hitting f1 and then copying this interface going once again here and then you will get the information that this interface is obsolete. You should use the um, uh, this one. 
So that's important. So with IFS. And in, uh, in our case, it's also important to use this one because if we're moving to methods, then I would like to use or to redefine the after completion callback method because this method is being used immediately after the activity is completed. So in our case, if the one step approval activity is finished, then I would like to process the outcome and do some after activities within ABAP. So therefore, um, yeah, clicking on the uh, redefine method. Yes, I would like to save my changes. And here we are. So, and in my case, I'm not using the super method. So I would like to directly do my own coding. So, and therefore, first of all, um, you have to, to be aware that we, we need to get our outcome. And therefore we're using the IO current activity object and basically to process if you want to I can also show you some process some workflow container element the data you can use the IO context so first start basically with um, extracting the outcomes and therefore I am defining one internal table calling it LT execution result and therefore I am using the um, I or current activity and the method get execution results. So, and here basically you have an internal table and once again, defining another variable for the outcome itself. So in there for, for example, approval results and therefore I'm using the LT execution result and the first row and the name is result. Then I would like to check. So for example, it just makes sense if this uh, is not initial. So to make sure of this. So, and therefore now we have here, once again, going into SWDD, into our activity, into our approval, we have approve or reject. So one of those two outcomes you can also see within here. So going once again into the coding. So now I would like to show you how you can uh, get so, some um, workflow container data that you can also use. So therefore we're getting the purchase order data, the header data. So we can see that here we have um, saved this into PO hat. So here it's important to copy exactly the name you are using within here. So going once again into the coding and therefore first of all we need our workflow container and therefore as mentioned we're using the io context and the get a workflow container method okay then we're calling the lo workflow container and therefore um, this method so the get with an exporting it's called name um, of the exact name and we're importing data so for example ls head of course we have to define this so here just defining it ls head type echo as you have seen it so then doing a pretty printer right now and now you can do for example if you would like to update the data um, directly within the table so just showing you what it has to look like. You can also have some other use cases uh, getting another container element. But in this case, uh, I'm checking, for example, if this uh, yeah, is not initial in our case. And uh, here I would also like to check uh, based on our approval result. Here it could be approve or it could be reject so once again doing a pretty printer and now for example just to show you this it doesn't make so sense so for example you would like to um, cr change the creator to to this one and then you have to update 
just doing this so and then doing a commit work so this is what it can look like so once again um, just getting basically the execution results and then based on the execution result over outcome and then if it's not initial then we're getting the workflow container from the workflow container we're getting for this name for the workflow container element the data and then if the data is not initial then depending on the outcome itself um, we are changing one field and then we're updating the data based on our received data we're doing a commit work so yeah this doesn't really make sense so um, yeah let's just leave this in place to show you this uh, because i would also like to show you this um, in the debugger so then doing a syntax check of course if you would like to because here we're getting some warnings you can surround your methods with some try catch so here for example you can put a try catch surround this so here you can do this for some exceptions and you can also do exactly the same for this one so yeah this really yeah makes sense if you want to so then let's activate this um accept those two and then basically yeah you're ready to go so then let's put a breakpoint in um with also the swfrg okay so this is fine and now let's what is really important we need to change our callback class so therefore copy your class name going once again into your scenario into your flexible block under control and then you have to change it save it and activate your scenario Okay, once it's activated, then let's test this. So therefore I'm going into the purchase order into this class and then I'm going into SWUE, changing it to class. So to start, hit the enter key and for event parameters, I'm using my name, for example, this user. And here, for example, this purchase order, just some sample data, clicking receiver synchronous, and then choosing create event. So here we're directly jumping into this, into the debugger. So let's check what is being re extracted. So here, what is basically in the LT execution result. So let's check this basically here we don't have any result and here it's important that uh, basically this is the activity for creating the html this is being executed first so let's move with f8 okay so now we're going into swia so so let's execute this so here we can see our flexible workflow this is basically ready so the approval step basically you can also open this up in the sap my fury inbox app but here i would like to do it within here or with the sbwp and this is also possible here we have over um yeah over two activities and i click then on approve then i will directly once again go into the debugger and let's check now what is an execution result and now we have our approve so here by the way if you need more information for lt execution result here you see those columns so yeah depending if you would like to process this as well uh, maybe also the work item id could be quite useful for you to work on then with f6 going uh, down first one with result so the approved one 
Um, let's get the container. Here we have the container. And now we have our uh, header information. And of course, all of those are empty except the purchase order number because just this information we have passed. So let's get once back. So, and then once again, it's jumping into here. And now you can do your coding, your logic that you want to in this case. I am just changing the data. I'm not really updating this on the table, but I really would like to show you that this statement has been reached. So with F8 and exit this, and then now we can see that this has been completed. So yeah, as easy as it is. So this is one way how you can basically work with the outcome in flexible workflows. Of course, depending on your use case, you could also create another activity and then work with the past information with a workflow container element and with a task element. But this is one option to work with the runtime data. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions left, please put them in the comment sections. Please like this video and please subscribe to not miss great upcoming videos. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.